<laughs> full screen camera. There okay. Yeah, wow. And, and there's a, a tiny bit of a delay, but that's that's you live right now, so they can see us. That's All right. Good, so good day. <laughs> you guys can hear us okay? Sound is good. Hi, Julian. <laughs> Hello. Finally, we're live. Hi, Edgar. Hello, Ramden, Ahmed, Rodrigo, Ali. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, my first ever stream. I'm very nervous. <laughs> you might be able to tell. Um, I've never done this before, so we will see how it goes. Um, so, my name is Julia. I am from Canada, obviously. Um, I'm a teacher here at Canadian College of English Language. Um, I've been here for about four years, um, but this is my first time streaming, so a little bit nervous, but I'm excited to get to know you guys. Okay, thank you. <laughs> How's it going? So where are you all from? Can some of you introduce yourselves to me? Pillar, hi Pillar. Welcome, Giovanni. Thank you, Valeria. I like your name too. <laughs> Only human can't hear me. Mm. Hello, Lolly. Lolly from France. Amazing. I lived in France for one year. Ah, Venezuela, Colombia, Buenos Aires, Morocco. Wow. This is pretty cool. USA, nice. Hello, Dominican Republic, wow. So, multi, ah, multicultural. Oh my goodness, I have to get used to this new keyboard. Okay, how is everyone doing? Good, all right. It's really great to meet you all virtually. Um, Yes, so let's hope I don't make too many mistakes, but we will get started. Inderpreet from India, awesome. Sunny California, great. Okay, I can't say everyone, so I'll stop now. Um, but today we are going to discuss um, three different kinds of verbs, okay? We're going to be using the SMART uh, content of the Unit 120. Uh, level, intermediate, beginner, intermediate. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Everyone, how do I go to the other screen? <laughs> Just give me a moment. So they can, s can they see this already? Not quite yet. So whatever we're looking on in this preview over here is exactly what they can see. So oh, this. Okay. Yeah, so these are the scenes right here. So when we started, that was the first one that says new streamer. And the mm -hmm. main display is when we have your webcam in the bottom right hand corner okay. with this screen behind. Okay. okay, okay, main display. Got it. Sorry, everyone. Just getting to know the ropes here. All right, so like I said, if you can see here on the screen, um, three kinds of verbs. We're going to be reviewing that today. Um, so let's get started, shall we? All right, three kinds of verbs. We are going to start by talking about the auxiliary verbs, okay? This might be not new for most of you, but it's very useful to review and to get very comfortable with the auxiliary verbs, okay? So we have three different auxiliary verbs, be, do, and have. All right, uh, and they each have their own special function, okay? Um, so we use these to change tenses, okay? To make questions and also to make negative sentences, okay? We call them helping verbs for this reason that they are not alone in the sentence. They are helping another verb to do something, okay? So let's look at some examples. I don't like traveling to cold countries, okay? So our auxiliary verb is don't, okay? 
And as you can see, if you remove don't, the, the meaning is the complete opposite, right? So, I like traveling to cold countries. No auxiliary verb is necessary in that sentence. If you want to express the opposite opinion, you need to use the auxiliary don't. Okay. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Ah. Um, Karim is still working here, I believe. Yep. And... Joshua, yes, good. And only human, I did not ignore you. You're from Yemen, great, good. Could you zoom, please, Julia? I'm not sure what that means. Like bigger, like this, maybe? Lolly, 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 is that better? Maybe that's a little bit better, a little bit bigger, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Great. Good. Good. All right. So let's. Sorry. Let's continue here. Um, also, the next sentence we see: He has already seen the movie. So we see that we have a past participle here. We need to use this auxiliary verb to create the present perfect. Okay. Next, we have, are they leaving now? All right, so this, we see ing. We are using the be verb to create the continuous tense, okay? So, let's continue and talk about the next style of verb, that is uh, modal verbs, okay? Modal verbs, they have a lot of different uses, um, and here are some examples. We have may, we have can't, we have should, some others include will or would, um, could, okay, shall, um, and like I said, they all have different uses. We can get into more detail at another time, um, but let's continue. It may rain tonight. In this sentence, may is signifying uncertainty. It means maybe, okay? Um, we can't get to the airport in five minutes, okay? Can't is about ability. It's impossible. Uh, and the next one, should I pay a tip for that in Italy? We use should to ask for advice, okay? Um, it's important to remember that after a modal verb, we always have a base verb. Okay, so even for he, she, it, do not add an S, not necessary, okay? Ah, let's see. The Avengers, that's a very popular movie right now. <laughs> okay, number three, full verbs, the next type we're talking about, okay? They are the rest of the verbs, okay? We have all different kinds, um, and the important thing to remember is that be, do, and have, the verbs we just talked about, they are auxiliary verbs sometimes, and they are full verbs in other times, okay? Let's look at some examples when they are full verbs. I did my homework last night, okay? So there is no other verb in the sentence. It is your full verb. Is he sick today? Okay, we're using our be verb to ask a question, and our adjective is following that. Let's have lunch together. As you can see, have is your only verb as well. It's the main verb of this sentence. Okay. Um, we didn't sing any of my favorite songs. Can anyone see where the auxiliary verb is in this sentence? if I'm going to wait for it in the chat. What is the auxiliary verb in this sentence? We didn't sing any of my favorite songs. Thank you, Lolly Lolly. That's right. And John, good job. Exactly, JB. Didn't. So we're using this to make the sentence negative. 
did not act. Good job. Awesome. Next sentence, they go to yoga after work. Okay, so go in the sentence is our main verb. Good job, Nir. Next one, do we play basketball tonight? Okay, so we have play as our main verb and what in this sentence is our auxiliary verb? I'll wait for the answer. Do, good job, Gertrudis. Awesome, Ahmed, awesome. So we use do, as I said earlier, yes, to make questions in the present simple. Did is for past simple. Yeah, good job, guys. Okay. Um, so let's see here. We've now talked about them very briefly, the three types of verbs. Okay, so we have auxiliary verbs, be, do, have. We have modal verbs, words like should, could, will, and we have full verbs, okay? So that's what we're talking about today, um, but we're going to get into more detail, okay? So we're focusing on auxiliary verbs do a little bit more, okay? So do, does, did, we use them in present simple sentences, right? and past simple sentences, okay? When we need to make a question or when we want to make the sentence negative, okay? If we're talking in a positive sentence in the present simple, we do not need to use do or does, okay? If our past simple sentence is positive, we do not need to use the auxiliary verb did, okay? We're going to look at more examples. So I'm changing the screen here. Let's talk about more examples in the present simple questions. Okay. So I want to do some brainstorming with you guys, and I want you to help me to come up with some questions in the present simple tense. Um, and we'll see what you come up with. I will write them down after I see them, okay? So just remember, present simple, we're asking questions about habits, about routines, about uh, things that are repeated often, okay? Maybe schedules, that kind of thing. Um, did you eat breakfast? That is a great question past simple question, however. So I'm going to put that under the next. Did you eat breakfast? Good job. The answer is no. <laughs> I did not eat breakfast this morning. Um, so let me just make my headliner a little bit better here. And this one. What is a present simple? Do you go to the gym? Do you go to the gym? Great question. I try. <laughs> Not too, too often. Let's see. What are the cases that we do not need to use does in the present simple? We do not use, need to use does in the present simple if our sentence is positive, Rodrigo. For example, she loves uh, tomatoes. We don't need to say she does love tomatoes, just she loves tomatoes, okay? Um, let's see here. Do you like terror movies? Here's another question. Do you like terror movies? And I will let you know that it's also very common to use the word horror movies uh, for this genre. It's a little bit more common than terror movies, but both are okay. Um, mm, not always. Usually I go for the funny comedy movies. <laughs> um, for emphasis, we can use do and did in positive sentences. This is very true. Good job, Salma. Yes. Um, if you want to put extra emphasis on the positivity, we do use um, auxiliary do, does, and did. For example, if, you're, if your roommate asks you, why didn't you do the dishes last night? 
and you said, I did do the dishes, okay? We are putting extra emphasis on the fact that you did it. So that is very true, good. Um, let's see, do you have, oops, let me do my next line. Do you have, I see, much time? Okay, and I'm gonna waffa waffa good job. I'm going to add one word in your question. I don't know if this is what you meant, but we often use the word free to talk about extra time. And another option for you is spare. Do you have much spare time? Um, my answer to that is usually I have quite a bit, which is nice. I love activities, so that's good. Um, are you vegetarian? It's a good question, but it's a, for the B verb. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, we do sometimes use the auxiliary verbs in positive sentences. Yes, we do. We do. Just to be extra focus on that. Do you play video games in the morning? Rehab Ahmed. Good question. Um, I do not but I'll put it to the list. Do you play video? Oops, whoops, whoops, oops. In the morning. Good, and let's see, what else do I have? My microphone is off. Is it working? No. Do you listen to podcasts in your target language? Lane, good question. Do you listen to so we would add an S on podcasts, because we're not talking specifically, in your target language. Um, French is my second language, so yes, sometimes I do try to do that. Uh, do you believe in aliens with an S on aliens? No, I don't. Do you have a pet? No, I don't. Uh, does she look like? Good job, Valeria. We should add one more word on the end. Um, for example, does she look like you or does she look like him? Uh, does she look like her mother? Okay. Um, let's see here. Do you speak French? Oui, lolly lolly. Je parle français, uh, but not that great. <laughs> Do you like dancing? Yes. Do you speak English? Yes. Does she go? to the gym daily. So don't forget the, Salma, before gym. Do you spend time on Facebook? A little bit. Um, are you happy with the situation? Good question, Crazy Cafe. Uh, but that's the B verb, right? Okay, good, good. We'll stop with the, the questions. That's really great, you guys. Awesome questions. Very good. Thank you, Lolly. <laughs> I try. Um, okay, so as you can notice from all of these questions, there is going to be one or two possible answers. What are they? Well, there are other options, but what are the main answers that you will get from these questions? Yes or no, exactly. Good. So it's important to understand that when a question starts with an auxiliary verb, okay, or a modal verb, it is a yes or no question. Good, awesome, you guys are rock stars, good. All right, so these were all present simple questions, okay? So now let's uh, get some more examples for past simple questions, okay? Can you guys think of some examples of past simple questions? So now it can be just about finished actions in the past. And I'll start you off with, did you do your homework yesterday? Okay. Did you try to eat sushi? Whoops. Good. Good. Um, in this case, with try, and to eat, okay? When we use the verb try with infinitive, to eat, 
it's talking about kind of making an attempt to do something. Um, if we're talking about a first time experience, it might be best to use the gerund ing and not the infinitive. Okay, did you try eating sushi? Okay, let's see some more. Wow, you guys are fast. I can't keep up. I'll read some of them. Sultan, did you use it? Good. It, it's very, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, it, but it's grammatically good. Did you use the computer, for example, more specific? Uh, did you see me yesterday? Good, Wafa. Ali, did you go to school yesterday? Awesome. Did you go to the gym last year? Good job. Did you sleep well? Great, Lane. Yes, I always sleep well. <laughs> did you watch news last night? Near, good job. But we'll say, did you watch the news last night with an article? Um, did she play yesterday? Did you meet your girlfriend? Okay, so Crazy Cafe, good job. But lately is some, an adverb we don't really use with uh, past simple. It's more with the present perfect. So we should be a little more specific. Did you meet your girlfriend, uh, for example, two days ago? Okay, lately is more so with the present perfect. Have you met your girlfriend lately? Um, Ahmed, did you see the film yesterday? Good job. Did they reflect before speaking? Good question. Maria, did you see him yesterday? Awesome. Did you eat watermelon last week? Very good. Uh, did you have a second job? Wafa Wafa. Good question. Um, but we might want to be more specific uh, about the time. Like, did you have a second job? when you were studying at university, that kind of thing. Did you do your homework good? Did you like to visit the home, your parents in US? So Stanislaw, good, good try here. Let's fix up just a few things. Great question though. Uh, did you like um, visiting okay, your parents Oops, parents' home in the U.S. Okay, good job. Um, did you eat some escargot in France? Um, I, I was, it was a long time ago. Um, I was 18, and I remember eating foie gras, lolly lolly, but I don't know about escargot, but the foie gras was very good. I did have lunch today, Valeria, thank you. Yes. Sean, <laughs> hello. Yes, it is, a live English class. Okay. Um, did you have class this morning? Pillar, good question in the past, simple. I did, I do, I teach here um, 8.30 to 10, and then 10.20 to 2.20, so good. All right, let's stop with the past simple questions. Those are all really great. Um, let's see if I can check. Did you see the present news on television? Yeah, or on the internet? Yeah. Um, good. I would use the word Judith current, right? I would say, did, did you, mm, or no, sorry, did you see the the most recent news on TV, okay? It's also, this question, it's a little bit better to use the present perfect. Have you seen, have you seen the most recent news on TV, okay? Um, did you watch Endgame last Thursday? Can you explain why did you use ING in the third question? This, yes, I can. So, um, did you try eating sushi? Try is our first verb, okay? And the second word is what we call a gerund, okay? I-N-G word. Um, and when we use the verb try, we use I-N-G to talk about experience for the first time. For example, 
I tried snowboarding last week or I tried skateboarding last year. If we use try to skateboard or try to be on time, uh, it's about making an effort. Okay, so it depends what you want to focus on. If you want to focus on effort, you should use try and then infinitive. If you want to focus on a first time experience, you should use try ing. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, um, hopefully that explains it a little better. But we are going to continue. Okay. So um, there is no singular form of news. Okay. Um, did you like eating fish? Yes. I love fish. Okay, thanks guys. We'll, we'll stop for a moment with that. Um, so we've covered auxiliary verbs, do, does, did. Okay, um, we've got present simple and past simple. And knowing that in a positive sentence, no auxiliary verb is needed unless you want to put extra focus on the positivity. Um, okay. So, one more thing with negative uh, questions, we need to add a few more examples. So, now if we use, why didn't you eat your dinner last night? I just want to make sure everyone is aware that after didn't in the past, the verb is in the base form. It's not in the past simple, okay? Even though it's a question about the past. Uh, for example, um, what doesn't he like to eat? Okay? Instead of what doesn't he liked to eat? All right? So, Let's move along here to the auxiliary verb be. Okay, let's see here. All right, good. Sean is my boss, so hopefully I'm doing an all right job. I don't know. <laughs> first time, first time. All right, let's continue for the auxiliary verbs, the be auxiliary verb. Okay, so it has a few different functions. And the main one, we create the continuous tense with the be verb, okay? Um, so be verb and verb ing, okay? So these are describing actions in progress, okay? Um, and we use be even in positive sentences, okay? So uh, we're always using the be verb now, not do, does, did. Let's look at some examples. Present continuous positive sentence. I am feeling much better today. Okay? We use present continuous to talk about changes. Okay? Changes in your body or in the weather. Um, maybe I could say gas prices are really rising in Vancouver. Out of control. <laughs> Um, or the, the weather is getting warmer, for example. Question we need to do inversion. So we put our auxiliary verb before our verb ing, okay? And our subject after the auxiliary verb. Are you coming to the party tonight? Okay. So we use present continuous also for future. Okay, it's really the most common way to ask your friends about their plans. You know, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing this afternoon? Um, what are we doing this weekend? That kind of thing. Okay. So, let's see. Continuing on, present continuous. So we have the present, we also have past continuous. So same thing, positive statements. Okay. With past continuous, we usually have our past continuous, and then we have a past simple action that interrupts it. For example, the phone rang, 
while I was taking a shower, okay? Or um, my mother called me while I was doing my laundry, okay? So we have past continuous longer action and then sometimes past simple finished action will interrupt it, okay? And question form again, when we want to know about specific times, what somebody was doing at a specific time, okay, we can ask in the past continuous. Was she sleeping at 10 p.m.? Or what were you doing at 4 p.m. yesterday? Okay. And negative sentences, we need to use our be verb as well. The wind wasn't blowing hard then at a specific time. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so present continuous. Let's move to our document and present continuous. Let's do some examples. Who can give me? Ah, Gina, good job. I'm going to just do my sentence here. So I have a sentence from Gina. I am cramming for midterms. Uh, okay, midterm exams. Midterm exams. Good. And this word here, cramming. Maybe not everybody knows what this is. Can anyone write in the chat what cramming means? And the next is good. I was learning English when somebody knocked oops, at the door. Yep. And we can also say on the door. Good. So cramming. Gina used this good word cramming. Um, very common word for students um, and waiting to see if somebody knows what it means. Uh, Yasmin, that's the name of a good friend of mine. Welcome. Good. Good sentence. I was, whoops, whoops, I was, whoa, capitals, whoa, I was cooking when the phone rang. Awesome. Okay, cramming. So I didn't get the answer, so I'll tell you. Cramming means when you study, 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 study as much as you can in a short time. Yes, cramming does mean studying furiously. <laughs> yes, um, some people learn best with cramming and others, it, it's in one ear and out the other. It doesn't stay in your, in your mind, but I used to do a lot of cramming in university. Um, let's see. I am watching and learning English with you now. That's good, for sure. Yes, and good lolly lolly. It also means to fit something in a small space. Like if you're going on a vacation, you cram all of your stuff in your suitcase and you try to close it. <laughs> very, very full. Um, so yes, yes, cramming does mean to completely fill. The slang term, when we're talking about studying, it means to study, study, study in a small amount of time. Okay. Good. All right. Let's see here. Be verb. Okay. As you can see up here, we have am, is, are, was, were, but we also have been. Okay. And we're using this for the passive tense. So let's see, passive sentences, they take your be verb with a past participle, okay? It's a voice in English. We have our active voice and we have our passive voice, okay? Active voice is more common in speaking, um, but sometimes we do use passive voice, okay? So let's do some passive examples. When you're talking in the passive, you need to start your sentence with the object of the, the person or thing receiving the action, not doing the action, okay? 
So I'll give you a few examples preparing for your class uh, on Saturday. Good job, Pillar. All right. Um, so passive examples, I would say my phone was stolen last night. This is not true. It's just an example. Um, but as you can see, my phone is the object receiving the action, not doing the action. Okay? So we do need our be verb and we need our past participle. Okay? So this is passive. Um, and we can change this to active easily by putting the person who did the action start in the sentence. For example, if I don't know who did it, someone, and then just stole, and then object, my phone, last night. Okay, so it's different order of things. There are some different kinds of situations uh, where we use passive, okay? And that is if we don't know who did the action, okay? Or if it's not important, maybe we want to keep the person a secret, okay? Um, or you just want to change the focus of the sentence, okay? Now, in order to do the passive, you must have an object in your sentence, okay? So, my bag is packed. There is no possible way to make the passive there, okay? Because packed is actually an adjective. So, let's see here. Um, the wall is painted, uh, for example, was painted blue two days ago, for example. So uh, this here, the wall was painted blue two days ago. Can anyone make the active sentence? Let's look at, while you're doing that, let me look at some of your examples. The book was written for her. Great sentence, Jacqueline. Awesome. My computer was fixed last week. Good job. Ayub, uh, if the class is too difficult, um, that's, that's okay. You can, you can ask questions or there are many other options too. Um, let's see here. My room was cleaned. Awesome. Thank you, Gina. The new teacher is loved by you two users. Good job. Yeah, and if we want to include the agent, we call the agent the person or who does the action. We can include it with by. Okay, so for example, the road was repaired by the city workers. Okay, but we don't need to include it. We can also say, uh, the city workers repaired the road. Okay, so this is active because we're starting with the agent who did the action. All right, so let's see. Someone painted the wall two days ago. That's good. That was the active sentence of this. Good job. Phone was invented in the in the 20th century. Good. So if we're going to say about an invention, we usually say the, we use the article the. The phone was invented. Whoops. The phone was invented in, and we need the 20th with th century. Whoops. Okay. Let's see here. My sister painted the wall blue. Good job, Nana. That is the active sentence. The clothes were made by designers. Good. Yeah. I painted the wall blue two days ago. Good. My brother was born two weeks ago. If that's true, congratulations. That's very exciting. Good job. OK. So um, let's keep going here. We know that passive uses the be verb, the auxiliary be verb. Okay, and also the continuous tenses. All right. So, um, and just remember, this lesson we're not going into extreme detail about each tense. We are just making sure that you know 
what the auxiliary verbs do so that you can recognize in later study, okay? Um, marijuana was legalized in Canada. Yes, Gertrudis, good, good sentence, good sentence. Okay, um, auxiliary verb have, the last one out of the three. We have have, has, or had, okay? And this is for the perfect tenses. They are a little more advanced, uh, the present perfect tenses. But we use have and our past participle, okay? So let's look at some examples. Um, if it's negative, we often contract, right? But you can make it two different words, have not. Um, I have not seen that movie. This is present perfect simple. Um, they have been studying really hard for the exam. This is present perfect continuous, okay? And lastly, had he eaten breakfast before coming to school? Past perfect, okay? So they each have their different functions, um, and that's another lesson for another time, okay? It gets a little bit too much if we want to do everything in one. Um, but we need to do a little bit of review now, okay? So going back to my document here. File, oops, insert, just do a little line. Okay, so auxiliary verb do, does, did. What, uh, who can tell me what does this auxiliary verb do? Have you been to Brazil, Jacqueline? That's a great present perfect sentence. Um, it does make sense to say, have you been in Brazil? Um, but it's more common when we're talking about traveling to use the preposition to. Okay? Have you been to Brazil? I haven't. I would love to in the future. I haven't visited Canada yet. Oh, well, Lolly, you have to come. Come soon in the summertime. It's nice. Um, yes, Ahmed. Do, does, did helps the main verbs. It does, yes. Um, what, what does it do to the sentence? I have never been to France. Okay, try to get in the habit of using to for when you're talking about traveling. Okay, I have never been to Morocco, for example. Making questions, thank you. Making questions, awesome. Yeah, helping other verbs, making Questions, it helps other verbs by creating the question, yes. Um, but there's one more, making questions. And what about the other thing we talked about? Yes, negative sentences, yes. Making sentences negative. Awesome, good job. And we're talking in the present simple or simple past. Okay, good. So let's keep reviewing. Sign Diallo, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm new at this, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm trying. <laughs> um, auxiliary verb B. Okay, we're going to go for B. Okay, so what, what do we make with this auxiliary verb? Have you ever been to Morocco, Crazy Cafe? I have not been to Morocco, but I would love to visit there. It looks very beautiful. Thank you, Lolly. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, PP, are you talking about for the auxiliary verb be to create the... Which tense? Which tense do we create with the auxiliary verb be? Yeah. Tense change. Yep. To create the continuous tense. Okay. And second thing, to speak in the passive voice. You guys are doing awesome. 
Okay, and lastly, review auxiliary verb have. Okay, what does that do? Present perfect, good. To create, oops, to create the perfect tenses. Okay, awesome. All right, so you guys are good. You're good for that. Have plus PP, exactly. PP, we say for past participles. And some of them are easy, some of them are irregular and very annoying to remember, but it comes with time. All right, so, so far we have talked about be, do, have, mostly as helping verbs, auxiliary verbs, okay? Um, but the last thing, uh, we have a few more minutes here. I want to talk about um, be and do and have, okay, as full verbs. So we haven't really talked about that yet. And they can all be the main verb of sentences, okay? So um, that's important to realize as well. So some examples. She is very tall, okay? There is no ing word in this sentence, and there is no past participle. So we know it's not a helping verb, okay? It's the main verb of this sentence. Can someone think of another sentence using be as your main verb? We often use it with adjectives to give you a clue. Or maybe professions, like people's jobs. OK, good. Yeah, and we can open it up to be, do, or have as main verbs, any of them. Good. I do my homework at night. Awesome. She is a teacher. Great. I have a nice family. Amazing. You are beautiful. Thanks. You too. <laughs> um, he is a hard working. So Yasmin, that's very good. We just need to include an object. He is a hard working person. Okay, because if you're using your article. If you delete your article, you don't need person, okay? Just saying, he is hardworking, okay? Uh, my homework is due on Tuesday. Oh, on tom sorry, if you're going to say tomorrow, Gina, uh, no preposition. Just my homework is due tomorrow. Um, I have four siblings. Good. I have a car. Awesome, Nira. I am 47. Good job, Jacqueline. There are Africans. Yeah, a little bit incomplete. You could say um, there are Africans in this country, for example. Crazy Cafe, I am the best. Good. Confidence is, is good. <laughs> she is a doctor. Uh-huh. I'm a student. Exactly. Good. So you all seem pretty comfortable with be, do, have as full verbs. She is a progressive person. Awesome. Good. You guys are awesome. OK, so um, let's continue. Have, it's very common to use with uh, illnesses. He has a headache. OK, or uh, maybe possession. For example, he has a nice car. Okay, or maybe relationship. She has four sisters. Um, maybe personal characteristics. I have brown hair, that kind of thing. Oh, bipolar. You, maybe you have to. Oh, I don't know if it's five o'clock at your place. It's three fifty-five here. So, um, let's see. He is a kind person. Good. She has a sore throat, okay? So with the illness, don't forget your article. She has a sore throat. Oops, okay. I have a cute pet. Awesome, Gertrudis, good. Okay, so um, we have gone through uh, all of the information there on SMART in this unit. 
I have two. Good. If you're missing one letter on your sentence, Jacqueline, what do you think it is? Just one letter. I have hazelnut eyes. Nice. It's 6 p.m. Good job, Pillar. So in Jacqueline's sentence, I have mm, not a, but because you're saying two, you need the S. I have two jobs. Good job, Gertrudis. Yes. Good. Okay, so um, we're going to come up to the end here, but before I sign off, how about we have a question of the day? Um, let's see, can everybody tell me your favorite thing that you know about Canada, for example? What are your what what are your favorite things about Canada? If you have never been here, maybe things that you have heard before. And I'll wait for some answers. Or you can ask me any questions you want with the last few minutes. I have got a house. That's good. Yes, Floor. Sometimes we use have got. In, in instead of just have, but it's the same meaning. I have great, oh great, yeah, great health care about Canada, yeah. Yeah, that's, John agrees, good, yeah. You love Vancouver, Gratutis? Yes, me too. I've lived here for only four years, but it's very, very nice place. Lots to do, lots of um, activities in the nature, which I enjoy. Canadian people are very kind and polite. Nice. I like Canadian buses. It has a sign, sorry. We do say sorry too much, <laughs> honestly. It's, it's like a, it comes out of our mouth without even trying. It's a habit. Yeah. Um, good. So for Crazy Cafe, your question, since chances is plural, you should ask, are there any work chances? Um, yes, there are many work opportunities, for sure. Um, yeah, taxes are not the best, but I think that's in many, many countries. <laughs> uh, Canadian's accent, easy to understand. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good. Uh, I think, so Maya says, I think there are a lot of beautiful landscapes in Canada, and I would, I would agree, yeah, especially in British Columbia, yeah. Canada has a large and beautiful nature scene, yes, Yasmin, lots of extreme sports here, lots of hiking and uh, paragliding and um, snowboarding, skiing, that kind of thing. Um... I have a red rose for you, please accept it. If that's using have as a main verb, that's a good sentence, yeah. Uh, how can I learn English without a, without a teacher? Um, well, I would say I don't know the exact answer to that, but some advice would be to just, you know, can, uh, do it, do it, do it, do it all the time. Speak the language whenever you can study the grammar points whenever you can and you know listening to movies and music and just exposure as much as possible for sure um, Gertrudis you've been to Canada five times that's awesome Gina what would you recommend Canadian food so for the question you could say what Canadian food would you recommend to me um, well, I'm sure everyone knows poutine, typical, typical suggestion, but it is really delicious. <laughs> um, and ha just a hamburger, but cooked on the barbecue, for sure. Um, animals, lots of animals in Canada, lots of bears, uh, moose, all different kinds of birds, um, but yeah. Maple syrup on pancakes, yes, but actually I think it's better on bacon, <laughs> gotta say. I love maple syrup, it's good. Uh, 
And yes, very multicultural country. That's one of the things I love about being Canadian. Just meeting people from all over the world in my home country is awesome. Um, but okay, I think that we're going to wrap this up for today. Um, thank you for being patient. It was my first time, so I, I will try to improve with each time. And yeah, I don't. I don't think I have anything else to add. Um, are there any books or teachers that can help you? Uh, Yasmin, yeah, probably. You, you could definitely find some good tutors in your community. Um, and, a l you know, the internet is a great thing as well. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. I will get more comfortable as time goes on. So. Good. All right. Good first stream. <laughs> Holy. Very, very good. So at the end of the stream, when you're doing the question stuff, mm -hmm. you can switch to the full screen, which oh. is kind of nice. OK, yeah. Um, thanks, guys, <laughs> for making Julia feel welcome. And we'll see you next time. All right. <laughs> so.